Fight for Olympus is a hand management game for two players and takes about 30 minutes to play. In Fight for Olympus, each player is a god playing their best heroes against each other to fight for control of Olympus and the Pantheon. The objective of the game is to get points, 7 max, by the time the deck runs out, or have all six spots on your side of the board filled at the beginning of your turn. The game consists of three phases. Play cards from your hand, attack, and draw new cards. There are three different types of cards you can play. Soldier cards are cheap to play, but don't offer much attack or defense. Heroes cost a lot to play, but usually have good abilities and higher stats. You can also play equipment cards onto your soldiers or heroes bumping their stats up. The stats of a particular card are on the bottom with the tack on the left and the health value on the right. The board contains three sections to play cards on, Olympus, Delphi, and Troy. Depending on where you play your cards, you gain a certain bonus if the card is undefended. But before we talk about that, let's talk phases of gameplay. The first thing you do on your turn is play cards. You can play as many cards as you want from your hand that you can afford. The cost to play a card is listed on the upper left hand side. To pay for the card, you must discard a card or cards from your hand that matches the colors listed on the left hand side. Some cards, like the soldiers, have no cost and you can play at any time. There are four different colored cards green, yellow, blue, and red. Some cards are multicolored, which means they can be used for any color. After you pay for a card, you, pay, you play it in an empty slot on your side of the board. Once you've played all the cards you want and or can, then it's time to move on to the attack phase. The attacking player will resolve every card on their side of the board, whether that card has played, been played on this round or a previous one, starting with Mount Olympus and then moving towards Troy. If cards have at least one attack point, they will attack. If there is an opponent's card on the opposite side, it will be dealt with, it will be dealt damage equal to the attack points listed on the attack card, placing a damage token on it. If there is an empty space on the opposite side of the attacking card, then they will be awarded a bonus. The bonus for Mount Olympus is you get to move the marker on the victory point track towards you. The bonus for Delphi is that you can take a colored marker of your choice. These markers can be discarded when paying for cost of a card at a later time. If all the markers are taken by the other player, you were supposed to be awarded one, you can take one from your opponent. The bonus for Troy is you simply draw a card. After the attack phase, the current player draws two cards, ending their turn. And that's pretty much the game. The game can end in one of three ways. A player reaches seven points on the victory track, which will immediately end the game. The game will also end if the draw pile runs out. Whichever player has the victory point token on their side of the board wins. If a player has all six slots filled on their side of the board at the beginning of their turn, which means their opponent failed to destroy any of their cards on their turn, they win. Hello and welcome back to Gamers Remorse. Today we're checking, about, checking out Fight for Olympus. Uh, one of the uh, two-player games from Mayfair, so let's check it out. Uh, overall, gameplay seemed to be pretty simple. I mean, mm -hmm. it's two-player. You're essentially doing this tug-of-war type thing with the heroes and uh, soldiers mm -hmm. of Greek tragedies and whatnot. Um, what did you guys think? Did it play well? Do you think uh, there was enough control, or was it somewhat random, or what's your thoughts? Uh, I mean, there was definitely room for strategy, but it was a lot of luck base. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, like, I mean, there was hand management as well as just, like, luck of the draw. Like, um, there were certain cards you wanted to play, but it might change because you're not getting the cards you need. So mm -hmm. I thought it was very interesting because of all of that, right? I mean, the different places you have on the board could help you mitigate some of that risk, but at the end of the day probably 75% of the time you're actually using the cards you draw, you yeah. drew, and they could all mm -hmm. be yellow, you know? Yep. In which case, you can't really do that much with it or all green or whatever. Yeah. So uh, it was interesting. Sometimes I felt like it limited me too much, but mm -hmm. other times I felt like it just had enough of that randomness to keep it interesting. So I, I'm kind of at a funny spot with this game because I like it, but I don't love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. My wife loves it, though, and I think because yeah. she likes a little bit more random in her games yeah. than I do. What do you think? Yeah, I thought... And, and interestingly enough, I mean, it's a Greek mythos game, but you won't see any of the Greek gods because you are the gods fighting over Olympus. Right. And so it's interesting. And I, that's how I kind of interpreted that aspect of theme is mm -hmm. I'm like, I might really want to utilize 
the Arcanians, but those people aren't paying me homage. Right. And so I can't. You know, and so there's the aspect oh. of, that's how I interpreted that, that color differentiation is that mm -hmm. locale does not honor me as a deity. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, I was trying to use theme to excuse that mechanic. Okay. Um, so some people might not be able to disillusion themselves in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, but I, once I did that, I was able to cope with that. And I enjoyed that aspect of, I really want to play this card, and I really want to play this card, but I have to spend one of them to use the other one. Yeah. Or I have to wait till next turn. Yeah. So you're sacrificing potential to use other potential. Mm -hmm. I will say in these two-player game series, there always seems to be a, a lot of gameplay mm -hmm. in this small box, and I absolutely love that. This game absolutely delivered on that as well. Yeah. There was just a lot of things you can do. Um, yeah. But, I mean, it is purely a hand management game, which is interesting, mm -hmm. too. Usually you don't see a, a streamlined game only set up for one specific mechanic. Yeah. But this game did pretty well in mm -hmm. regards to that. Yeah. And the artwork, of course, is gorgeous. It's, yeah, it's They amazing. delivered on that, which, not to knock Mayfair, sometimes it doesn't deliver, right? But this game, solid on art. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I thought the artwork, the, the layout of the cards, very easy to understand what you're looking at. The mm -hmm. text is very readable. The iconography is easy to pick up on. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's an easy game. It's just they utilized the iconography and the card layout very well, I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, and easy to learn. I mean, it's it's honestly a game you could pick up in, I don't know, a minute or less. Mm -hmm. The yep. rules are fairly simplistic. There's a couple of corner cases with how many equipment items can you have. Mm -hmm. One, but it's buried in the rule book. I mean, it, but it's only a four-page rule book. So. Yeah, it's a small rule book. And I found it was very repetitive, so it'd be like, you know, you have to pay for cards, and then like later in that paragraph, when playing a card, don't forget to pay the cost. <laughs> right. And then a bit later, it's like, cards discarded to spend for a cost. Right. And I felt like it could have been cleaned up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But... I would agree. Uh, and pacing? I think that's where this game kind of struggles. I think yeah. the gameplay's pretty good. Artwork is awesome. Theme is there. But the pacing, it's just kind of slow because there's a lot of decisions. There's a lot going on up here. And I think maybe that's why it's a two player game and it works so well for that is because usually you're paying attention to what the other person's doing, but sometimes it can take, you know, in the order of five minutes for someone to make up their mind about what they're gonna do. I mean, the result is pretty cool because there's a chain reaction of, oh, I'm gonna play this, yeah. I draw two cards. Ah, every time I draw a card, I do this, you know. Ah, then I'm gonna attack this guy. All really cool, but it, sometimes it can take a little while and the pacing can suffer as a result. Agreed. Agreed. Disagree. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. I might be the pacing problem in this case. <laughs> I, I felt like I was that as well. So <laughs> like, AP prone yeah. folks maybe steer clear of this. And one. I mean, as I was playing it, I didn't feel like there was much of a pacing issue. And maybe that's because like I tend to be a faster player. Mm -hmm. But then observing the game, if you're not oh, playing yeah. and you're watching, yeah. Since most of the game is happening internally, mm -hmm. and then they'll be like, "And drop two cards. All right, your turn." It's like what. Like, there's very little actually happening when you're observing, yeah. and so it looks even slower than it is. And maybe that's a good point, is if it's just two players, you know, and there is no observers or anything, while the other person's making up their mind of what it is they're doing, you just got new cards. Yep, you're, and you're studying reading those, them. so you're just ignoring the other person. Maybe yeah. that works out. I don't know. <laughs> Pick up this game and ignore your friends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that what... No, no. Anyway, uh, let's see. Replayability? I think so. I mean, every time you play, you're going to have different cards, different options. Mm -hmm. Well, and you take out 20 cards at the beginning of the game anyway, mm -hmm. so... True. Those are cards yeah. that you might not use. Uh, that. Well, you won't use that that game, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it does come with blank cards, so you can make up your own Greek heroes. Or maybe there's a Greek hero that isn't in here. Yeah. Obviously, your art probably isn't going to be as good, but it would be fun to have, like, Brianicus the Splendid or something mm -hmm. like that in there. Gotta love Brianicus the Splendid. So magnificent yeah. Greek comedy. Oh. But then also, I, I know some other reviews that I had been looking at, they mentioned by removing those 20, they are discussing how does that impact the balance of the game, yeah. which I almost think isn't an issue. You're drawing from the exact same draw deck. Yeah. So if it weakens the deck, well, it weakens both of you. Right. Um, so I, I think because you have that shared deck, it works totally fine. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, you're removing all of the wild cards, in which mm -hmm. case 
just one of you isn't getting them. None of you are. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the balance comes down to the luck, not the deck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, the game's 25 bucks. You can pick it up just about anywhere now. Uh, it's one of Mayfair's new releases from Gen Con 2016. Um, check it out if this sounds interesting to you. All right. Thanks. Bye. I lost every time I played this game. The Greeks hate me.